back with another interview and look how the tables have turned. <laughs> Man, you already know who it is, Pay Lee. One for the niggas that's getting that dough. Yo, get the money, stop blacking for the bros. Fuck what they saying, it's time to get paid. What's happening, boy? How you doing? I'm, I'm doing all right. This is uh, this is cool. It feels a little weird. Being on the other side of the pillow today, y'all, but fuck it, I'm here. For so sure, for sure, man. So, uh, man, I know where you're from, but uh, for those who don't know, where are you from? Uh, the biggest little city in the world is what they call it, a.k.a. Reno, Nevada, oh, born and raised. That's what's up. That's what's up. <laughs> yes, sir. Shout out Reno. How was it growing up out there? Um... I guess in Reno, uh, it was kind of regular. Like, I mean, it really just depends with the crowd of people that you're with. People I was with, we were just doing hella fun shit. Like, eh, low-key bad shit, but I mean, it was just kind of regular. We were just fucking chasing little females around. Fucking around in class, playing sports though. We all most like most of the people that I fucked in high school, we all graduated. So I mean, even though we were doing stupid shit, we were still on our shit. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, uh, didn't grow up rich, obviously. But yeah, it was kind of regular, I guess. Nothing too crazy. I'm not like one of those people that have like no crazy ass. I was shot. Three years old type of kids and then, you know, kind of right. like that. Nah, that's what's up, man. Shit. Uh, what are some like early on influence that makes up Pay Lee? Hmm. Early on, <laughs> that's a little funny. Probably, probably Wayne. I'd probably say Wayne. I had a. <laughs> One of my first CDs I had was a Chief Keef CD, Finally Rich and Lil Wayne, I Am Not a Human Being. Yeah, that that is that is a title of that. That sounds know. like around the same the same the time, era. like twenty twelve, twenty eleven. Yeah, kinda of like around there. So that's when I started kinda of getting my influence, I guess, as far as rap. Uh, Hustle and Flow, that movie made me write my first rap ever. Mm-hmm. So whenever that movie came out, that's when I wrote my first rap. Oh, shit. Hustle so, and Flow, that's a classic right you know, there. Yeah, so I guess that should influence me too. Fuck it. Shit. So when did music come into play for you? Mm, I guess as far as really making it. 25th, the end of 2015, beginning of 2016. Were you in like a group? Yeah, uh, I was um, I was in a group with <laughs> with two other people. Shout out Mike. Shout out to uh, we were in Flex Squad. You know, oh, oh, Flex like, Squad. <laughs> Shout out <laughs> Flex Squad. <laughs> That's a little funny, bro. You you guys could probably like if you went to go to my old Facebook or whatever, you could probably see me and um like uh like when I was in my flex squad era, flex squad days, whatever the fuck you want to call it. And yeah, I thought I was flexing. I thought I was selling fly. Really, I was selling booty and Justin Lane. But you know, Man. at that time, yeah, flex squad. That's that's the group we was in. Flex squad. It was just us three. It was originally then two. And then I kind of just snuck my way in there. What what era is this in? Like, what's um? Mm, what era? Mm, what was going on back then? Twenty fifteen, twenty sixteen. I don't know what was jumping off at that time, as far as like the trends and shit. But yeah, it was just around twenty fifteen, twenty sixteen. Oh, I don't really yeah. know what era musically that would be, or like what. 2015. It was popping or whatever. That was an interesting time. Because it was past the jerking days and shit. So. Yeah, jerking was like way like 2011. 20... Shit. 
2012. Yeah, it was past the day. So I, I don't really know what's popping off at 2015. 2015, man. It was an interesting time, man. Yeah. In music. It's kind of like slow. It didn't get start picking back up until 2016, I would say. That's when, you know, these sounds that we know and love, mm-hmm. you know, that are still popping off right now came about. Yeah. Oh, um, shit, man. So let's get into the album. What's the album called? Album. Um, it's going to be called Why Aren't You Famous? Why Aren't You Famous? Yes, sir. That's going to be the album coming soon, y'all. What does that mean to you, man? Um. So for the people out there that probably want to see it for the first time or just look at it, be like, why aren't you famous? It kind of sounds kind of just like, kind of just like vague, kind of just like whatever. Mm-hmm. But I guess it means like, why aren't you doing what you need to do to be where you need to be at? Like, it's not just why aren't you famous? Like, why aren't you popular? It's just kind of like, why aren't you on your shit? But I just put, why aren't you famous? To kind of throw a little twist on there to make it seem like, you know, like, you know, why? It's almost like a. It's like a rhetorical question. Like, you know why you you ain't on your shit like how you supposed to be. Exactly. You know, it's just, <laughs> you know people be uh, complacent or people be, uh, you know, not on uh, pushing shit off. Like, you know, I can do that later. I can do this later. No, now is the seize the moment. I feel that. Yeah. I'm fucking with it. Yeah, hell yeah. That's what I did it for, you know, just because uh, – and I also wanted people to kind of, in a way, confront me, like you said, to be like, you know why. You know why you're not famous, quote unquote. You know why you're not blah, 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 because this, this, and this. So I'm just going to put it all out there now. Right. Sometimes you need a, a, a indirect support system. Some some may call them haters. <laughs> <laughs> some people call them haters. Some people call them motivators. motivators you know, yeah. It is what it is to me. Either way. Um, I don't let it stop my grind, so. Yeah. Keep I, going. I feel that. Any collabs? Uh, of course. I know it's still in the works, is it? Yeah, it's actually still in the works. Right now it is still in the works. But in the meantime, um, do I want to spill some names? Yeah, fucking, you know. Um, of course, I got my boy, Matt K. Yep. In the album, of course. <laughs> I'm um, trying to get a couple other people in there. I do have a D-Lo um, feature on my album. If you guys fuck with D-Lo, Blue Boy D-Lo, make sure you go tune into the album too because he's going to be on that motherfucker. It's going to be hot, sizzling. For and sure. um, I'm going to have 10 tracks. Too. For sure, for sure. That's all I can name right now as far as the collabs, but it is. It's be pretty cool. Got you. Mm-hmm. So what's your uh process when it comes to making music? My process Man, I honestly don't even have a legit process for my shit. I'm kinda just I'm kinda just one of those in the moment type of rappers, if that makes sense. Like I don't really I'm not gonna lie, I'm not in the studio every day. Mm-hmm. Um, even if I could be in the studio every day, I wouldn't be in there for like hours instead of a day. I'm just one of those people that once I'm catching that vibe, then that's when I go in. Mm-hmm. But I guess my process would just be first I fucking hear the beat, and then I hum, you know, record myself like mumbling some words, blah, 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 trying to catch a little tempo, trying to catch a vibe. Mm. And then from there, I'll just hear the little shit and write to it, get in there, record it, mm. and then put it out. All right. Yeah. That's what's up, man. Like, the the recording process is so, like, I don't know. It's, like, almost when you hear that question and then you hear the answer, you're, like, almost like, huh? Is it really like that simple or is it really just like, you know, are we really like doing it? The, the process is very like sporadic. So, you know, I'm just asking these questions, but, you know, it's interesting hearing other artists' process, yeah, yeah. you know, especially when it comes to the creation of a song, 
Like, you know, the magic is in the time. And it usually happens in between sessions. Mm-hmm. And then you, you like, you know, that's when you, you, you do it. And it's like, oh, this is the one. Or oh, maybe <laughs> I spent too much time doing this song. <laughs> I waited too long. Yeah, how, how, have you ever waited too long to drop a song and then you realize, man, this is not, this is probably like, it's probably never a right time to drop it. Man, yeah. Especially fucking when I, especially when I was coming up. I mean, I'm still coming up. I'm still on the come up, up and coming, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, like, um, of course, I've always had those moments. But that's why now, I don't really have any songs in the vault and my shit's always in the process when I'm doing albums. It's just, everything's kind of just ongoing in the process because when I wait, the longer I wait, the longer that shit's going to be collecting dust. And I feel like it's going to be like that with time too and the algorithm of music. So do you feel like it's like a, you have to keep up with music and keep up with the trends and, you know, just to, you know, as far as just what you put out, is it dictated, is or is what you put out dictated on what's popular? Hmm. That's a good one. Um, nah. I don't, I don't feel like I have to go with the trend and like kind of follow the trend. In a way, I feel obligated to sometimes because I feel like that's what I need to do to be successful. But um, on the other hand, I just kind of put it like, that's not my path. Whatever. I just kind of like to stay in my own world too, I guess, because I also don't want to get it like caught up in that and gimmick what other people are doing just because it's trending. I don't like, I don't like that, you know? Mm -hmm. It is. a. I feel like there's a, there's a perfect balance to being on trend or being like sonically what's going on now, but also putting your own interpolation onto that. Yeah. I feel like that's probably the the best way to do it. But also you can't be afraid to, you know, do shit just for the sake of doing it. Like, you know, just because this is how I'm feeling today. And I felt like working with you, in these past couple of years, you're not really afraid to like stand out and do something different. And that's something that's very admirable. Is there like, what, what makes you like, what makes you wanting to stand out? Like, what do you think is, or is it just who you are? Are you just being yourself or is it, just a, is it a conscious effort to, you know, break the mold? Hmm. Thank you, by the way. Oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I guess that's the question. Um, what well, makes me, let me say it like this. I guess um, I stand out because I like to. I feel more comfortable that way. Uh, I feel, I don't know, in a way it's weird. Like I feel boxed in doing what everybody else is doing, even though like that's the way to go and that's like the quote unquote thing to do. It's to kind of like follow suit, but I feel my best when I am, you know, pushing left and doing my own thing. Mm. And as far as the music, I like to stand out with the music too, because I want to draw in my own crowd of people that relate to what I'm talking about. Mm. I'm not really trying to like draw anybody else, you know, Mm -hmm. I'm trying to draw on the people that are like me. And that are thinking like me and that are moving and, you know, feeling like me. Okay. I'm not the only person in the world that wants to stand out. So right. I talk to the people that do and we can, you know, okay. come as one. How, how do people, do you see, do you come to find those, those people out in like, you know, the crowd when you do perform? I know you've had several performances. Mm-hmm. So like when you do perform, do people, do you get a good, uh, response or reaction to your music or you know do you develop a certain cult you see like certain people out there and they see you and recognize you <laughs> oh, i like that i like that okay um <laughs> yeah every i'm not gonna sit up here in front and say every crowd every show was uh, the best show ever but um i haven't had any like negative 
crowd reactions yet or whatever. But yeah, the good ones, I would say the good ones that I've had, I feel like people fuck with more of the energy I'm bringing. That's kind of where I was going. I I probably didn't say it the best, but like recognize you as in like, you know, that energy, like, oh, like, poop, like, you know, you stand out, (laughs) like, you feel me? Like, you're, you're, you know, it's like, uh, I noticed when I was, uh, I performed maybe, like, maybe like, three or four times and uh there's certain songs <laughs> that will like invoke a reaction you mm-hmm. feel me and uh if there was a song of yours that makes the crowd go crazy or makes the crowd like stop and be like oh what's going on what song would it be um okay well, one of the songs that I did at the, I opened up for Soda Baby in Reno, and me and one of my cousins, shout out Big Bang Puka, we did a song called Talk That Shit, and um, it was the first time when I performed, excuse me, where, where like um, people were out, like putting out their phones and shit mm-hmm. for us to grab it. The recorder was performing. I'm like, damn, that's crazy. So that was a that was a crazy ass thing. Talk that shit was one of those songs. Um, I did vibes. My song vibes. Mm-hmm. Well, since I like came on, they saw my energy and it was dun, 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 you know how I started <laughs> off and shit. And then my energy was already kind of going crazy. So yeah, that one too got a positive reaction out of that. Um. I heard some screams and some, you know, cheers and shit from mm-hmm. people that I've never even seen in my life. So that was cool, too. Okay. Yep. Vibes. Talk that shit. Yeah. So check out them tracks, man. Oh, uh, yeah. Mac of the Year. Run them some, up. Run them up. up. Yeah. Mac of the Year. Yeah. That was <laughs> one, too. Mac of the Year when that song came on. Um, the beat. Itself. That's, like, that's like some 2000s <laughs> vibe type. Yeah. You feel me? Listen to that shit at a concert with the speakers blasting, got some drink in your system, feeling good. That song will get you going. You know? mm-hmm. Get a two step in. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, what's your favorite album of all time, man? Damn. Hmm. That's crazy. That's a crazy question right there. You can name two or three if, if, if you know. You don't want to leave something out. Okay. All right, all right. I'm for sure going to have to leave something out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go with uh, The World. I think it is. That was one of my favorites. Me Against the World, yeah. I was I was going to start singing it too, but yeah. That one. That one's a fire. That, that one's a go-to. He really rapping on that shit too. It's not like a... Like a... Like, it is that one. It is that one. Yeah. It is that one. It is that one. It gets the world. Yeah, because he's not remembering. Oh, my bad. Uh, there was the All Eyes. It's not like All Eyes on Me got a more bounce to it. Like, you yeah, feel nah, me? Nah, and, nah, nah. You know, the, the, but that one's more like when he's talking. I think there's a there's a couple songs on there that's like, I, I'm like messing up on the track list, but yeah, that one's called, uh, yeah. I, I know Life Goes On is on there. Make us the world for sure. That song, that album would probably be, yeah, that'd probably be the greatest album. Make us the world. Mm-hmm. For sure, for sure. To live and die in LA is a really good song too. Oh yeah, yep. To yep. so live and die in LA. Man, any uh dream collabs, man? Um, uh, any dream collabs? Uh, I guess I'll say, like, just for the sake of body of work they've done, I'd have to just go with Russ, Chris Brown, Blast. That'd be cool. Um, One more would probably have to be... Nah, that's probably it. For sure, for, for sure. Now, for now. There's a lot more, but those are some some, some good aspira- artists. Aspirational. 
collabs, you feel me? Chris Brown, one of the hottest, most talented artists. Roddy Rich. Roddy Rich is, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, I fuck with Roddy Rich. Uh, any crazy experiences, like, you know, performing or, you know, just in general, partying, you know, having fun, experiencing life? Shit. In life, just in life and whatever, in mm-hmm. general? Whatever, whatever. You could pick it from any any aspect. Yeah, a lot of those, but... I guess not even really like a crazy experience, but like a weird, awkward ass experience. Cause I performed at a concert opening up for Haiti Baby and Lil Kalu. Mm-hmm. And there was like a couple of my people there. And then like three, four people in the crowd. Mm. There was two people in the front <laughs> watching me like this the whole time I was performing. <laughs> I'm like, bro, that 10 minutes seemed like an hour, bro. That shit was so weird and awkward. Like, they had no, like, facial expression? Nothing. It was just like, you couldn't read it. Just straight up, like, watching me the whole time. I'm like, damn. Damn. I hope that was faded or something. <laughs> I'm like, bro, what the <laughs> fuck? I was like, bro, I feel like the most boring artist in the universe, bro. But, I mean, I just had to, you know, stick it through and go with it. But I'm like, yeah, that's yeah, was... Those- those are the moments that will really like make or break you for real. Oh yeah, for sure. 100%. You know, it's like really shows you like, is this for me? And my like, that's <laughs> yeah. when you start questioning that shit. Like, fuck, yeah. bro. While you're performing though, you're like rapping the words, and you're like, you gonna you know made me stumble in all type of shit. Now I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, should I run off this motherfucker? Right. Man? I'm about to run off the face of the earth. You gotta kind of like tap out of your like your first instinct to like you know think about shit like. You got to just go. Yeah. You got to just go. But yeah, those are the moments. Those are them weird, awkward moments of just being on stage and having everybody's, like, you couldn't get everybody's attention, but once you got people's attention now, it's like, <laughs> what are you, are you going to perform? You know, are you're you already gonna, there. Are you going to make this, this worth it? You know, it's always, uh, and you get, every time you get on stage, you have that opportunity. You feel me? Yeah. So that was definitely a, um, that was definitely an awkward moment for me, but it was also a moment that made me say, you know, um, something just got to change. Whether it is three people or 15,000, they're going to have the same reaction. You're going to have 15,000 people in the crowd. They'll look at you the same way. It's just kind of how you present yourself and how you move. If you go up there kind of timid and scared, people are going to notice that. Mm-hmm. So that's one thing, artists, you should correct from the jump. As soon as you hear your name, as soon as you know you're about to walk on the stage, get it out your mind, that you're nervous, fuck all that shit. Go up there and do it. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> for so for so. Kendrick or Drake. <laughs> <laughs> That's a <little> funny. <laughs> fuck all that shit, nigga. Kendrick or Drake, nigga. <laughs> Straight on the poor shit. Fuck all that. Hey, man. Uh, I'm going to be straight up, man. As far as the music, as far as everything and life, I'll probably go with Kendrick. I'm For sure. Man. You know? Yeah, Drake, is a, Drake is a great artist. You feel me? So it's not, you know, but as far as like them lyrics, I, have, I would have to go with Kendrick too. Uh, what about uh, <laughs> Jay Z and Nas? Jay Z and Nas? I'd probably say Nas. They're, I'm not, no, I'm not, I'm not gonna say, you know, I'm not gonna have no, say no ill will with Jay Z, but I think, uh, I'll probably say not. Nah. Jay Z's music is a little, uh, a lot of people like it, I'll say that, but it's just not for me. Not for you. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Nas and, Nas, he, Still Matic is crazy. People don't give that 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 album enough credit. I feel like uh I like uh Jay Z's first album and I like the black album. And I like Blueprint too, I think. I think that's what it is. But I, I think I would say like as far as like the rapper's rapper, like Jay Z rap, but like a Nas is like crazy. Like he did that song Rewind with the 
he told his story in reverse. Like, and it was, that was just one of the most craziest, craziest, like, most, uh, you know, in, in, intriguing, like, uh, concepts to do. Yeah. You know? Um, shit. Future Thug. Future Thug. Um, damn. I'll probably go with Future. Because Future, um, I've heard I've heard Future's music way before I heard Young Thugs, and I feel like Future's music, music for me had a bigger, like, impact or influence. Mm-hmm. I want it to be more like a Future nigga than I would be like a Young Thug type of nigga, whatever, I guess. Okay. Yeah, so Future, for sure. Larry Jr. All Black. Hmm, i probably, <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> they both have good music. I both like them both. Excuse me, fucking bourbon. I'll probably go with um longevity-wise, I'll probably go with Larry June. Okay. As far, and as far as my vibe, Personally, I'll probably go there. Okay. I'm a fan of all black music, though. So yeah, I probably, I probably go Larry June. I like, I like, I like. He be on some smooth. Yeah, like, I like, I like that. Yeah. I like that kind of vibe more. Like, he be talking about some like, you know, some exotic shit. Yeah, <laughs> you feel you know? me? But like on on some West Coast <laughs> Bay Area, you, you feel me? Get I'm healthy not. on them punk rock, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so some green juice, you know? Man, right. Organic. I like I like that though, you know. So it's like some cool player music, but he's also like kicking with some real games. So real can... game, some mm-hmm. you know. Great A marketing for sure. Yeah. You know. For sure. Definitely like Oh, and that's def and that's um a collab too. I'd wanna I'd wanna do Larry June. Yeah, for sure. I feel like he would um I don't know. I feel like he would be a person like that. Put you up on a lot of game and shit. You know, oh. get me up with the merch, the music. So yeah, I definitely wanna collab with him for sure. Yeah, man. The show for show. Sure. Shout out his boba shop, in San Francisco. He got a he got a boba shop. Honey bear boba. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, shout out to this bubble shop. I went there, me and my wife went there a couple of times. So, shout out, yeah. Shout yeah, out show, man. I might have to slide over there. <laughs> my fiance. So, mm-hmm. sheesh. Yeah, man. So, that's what I'm saying. Like, just, uh, yeah, just shit like that is inspiring, motivates me, you know, to want to do stuff like that in the future. So, that's why I say Larry June, too, overall. Just, you know. Hell yeah. Yeah. That's a vibe, man. Mm hmm. Well, I enjoyed this opportunity to speak with you, chop it up with you on camera. Yes, sir. You know, give me the opportunity to interview D. Paley. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, glad to be here, man. Thank you for uh, letting me speak my little piece. For sure, for sure, bro. Well, we out of here. Eat. <laughs>